In this video, we'll be talking about the two special trigonometric limits that are included in your textbook and show how you can prove that these limits are what they are using the squeeze theorem. So the main thing is staring at these limits, there is no way to know right off the bat what these limits should be, right? They're not numbers. You can't just plug things in. You'd get zero over zero both times. It's not nice. But using the squeeze theorem, we can actually set up an appropriate set of inequalities that will let us prove that the first limit is true. And then we can use that one to prove the second one. So our main point is we're going to use geometry using triangles to figure out the inequalities we need to make this work. Like we said in the last two sample problem videos, the key things to figure out are what should your L and U be? Because we're given F and we're given C, here we're also given the answer, but we need to figure out what should L and U be, and we're gonna get those from geometry. So here's the main picture you wanna think about for putting together these inequalities. Here we have three geometric objects built into the same sort of circle triangle setup. I will note that for this, we need to assume that theta is between zero and pi over two. Otherwise the setup will not work. The first thing we have is this triangle here, which is sort of is a triangle from the origin up to a point in the circle and then down to the point where that, the circle intersects the X axis. And that because this top point here has coordinates cos theta sine theta, the area of that triangle is one half sine of theta. The base is one and the height is sine theta. We can then look at the sector of the circle of angle theta. That is area one half theta based on how we define radians, right? The important thing here is we're gonna be in radians because that will give us that this area here is one half theta. The entire circle has area pi, radians go up to two pi. So the area of any sector is just one half theta. That's just what it is based on uh, radians being defined that way. And the last half is a triangle that goes out further. And you can figure out that this height should be tan theta by similar triangles. That's also a valid definition of tangent theta is the height of the line segment if you were to draw out to this right triangle here. And again, base times height, the area of that triangle is one half tangent. If you look at these pictures, you'll see that these shapes are all nested, right? The triangle on the left is contained inside the sector, which is contained inside the triangle on the right. So what that gives me is that the areas must be increasing in the same order. That gives me the following chain of inequalities. Or by canceling the one half terms, something that looks pretty nice here. So now I can mess around with this algebraically and see what I can get. So if I take this left inequality, I can divide both sides by theta to give me that sine theta over theta is less than one. I can similarly take the right inequality, right tangent as sine over cosine and move some terms around to get something similar. And I can multiply both sides by cosine and divide by theta to get that inequality there. And now I can re-put these together. If I stack these up again, I then get that this chain of inequalities holds for theta between zero and pi over two. Now this would be great if it worked beyond that, but I'll, I only get on this range here. However, I can extend it for negative values of theta as well. If I note that every single thing here is even, right? Cosine of negative theta is still cosine theta. Sine of theta is odd, but so is theta. So that stays the same and the one stays the same. So because all of these things are nice across if I plug in negative theta, I get that this also holds on all from minus pi over two to pi over two, as long as I exclude zero, which is exactly what I need for squeeze theorem. So this is gonna be our suggestions for L of X and U of X for squeeze theorem. Now we just have to check the limits. So for L of X, we're just taking the limit as X goes to zero of cosine. I'm bouncing back between X and theta here. It works out the same way. It's just what variable I want to use in the given function because my answer that I wanted was sine X over X, not sine theta over theta, but it became easier to talk about triangles using theta. But as I take cosine of X, as X goes to zero, this is just one. And since the other side's a constant function, 
is clearly just one as well. Therefore, inequalities hold. The two limits match. Therefore, squeeze theorem applies, and we get our answer that this equals one. And we get our answer that way. So by using geometry, building up the appropriate inequalities we needed, and then applying the squeeze theorem, we get this limit that we thought we had from before, that sine x over x should go to one as x goes to zero. Now we want to use this to get the second limit. This is like an algebraic trick combined with this limit will give me the answer that I want. The limit we want to find is the limit as x goes to zero of one minus cosine x over x. And the trick here is to multiply top and bottom by one plus cosine x. On the top, we have a difference of two squares coming out and the bottom just stays how it is. And now I can use my trig identities to convert the top into a sine squared x. If I look at this now, I can see I have a sine x over x hidden in here. Let's multiply by another sine. So let me pull out one of those signs and then separate the sine x over x part on its own because I know that will go to one. Which gives me this expression here. And now, because I know the limit on the left exists, and the limit on the right exists, just is going to go to zero, we'll see that in a second, I can now use my multiplication laws for limits. So the first term I get is the sine x over x term, and then times the limit of the second factor there. Now as we go to zero, we know sine x over x goes to one. We needed that this limit existed in order to be able to apply the multiplication rule here. And this other function is continuous. As x goes to zero, sine goes to zero, cosine goes to one, this goes to zero over two, so the whole thing goes to zero. And that's what we're looking for for the second trigonometric limit here. So that gives you another idea of how you can use this squeeze theorem to prove things about different limits and the different ways it shows up across the scope of problems you might see in homework and on exams.